If there's a device that represents the comfort of modern life, it's this one. The ability to climatize the environment to your ideal temperature, regardless of the outside temperature. But have you ever wondered who invented this modern marvel? Although it's tempting to attribute this invention to a single person, it also involves several inventors and researchers over time. Some of them were even mentioned in the video about the invention of the refrigerator. These are concepts and ideas that were developed before the air conditioner and used in its invention. However, in the history of the invention of the air conditioner, one inventor can be singled out as having made the greatest strides in its development. I'm talking about Willis Haviland Carrier, the inventor of the world's first practical electric air conditioner in 1902, who is now recognized as the father of air conditioning. The first curious fact about this invention is that it wasn't developed to provide comfort to humans as we use it today. When Willis Carrier began his project in 1902, he was concerned with reducing costs and improving the quality of a printing company's prints. Willis Carrier was a young engineer at Buffalo Forge Company, a manufacturer of steam engines, heaters, fans, and exhaust systems. In 1902, he was assigned to help the owner of a printing company located in Brooklyn who was having problems with humidity fluctuations and impurities in the air in his factory. On hot and humid summer days, the printing paper absorbed moisture from the air and swelled, significantly altering its dimensions. Since color printing was done in up to four separate stages, with each of the four colors being printed individually, the paper's dimensions varied so much with each pass through the process that the ink layers were misaligned. Additionally, the heat and humidity also increased the ink drying time on the paper and dust suspended in the air increased problems, resulting in poor print quality. Willis Carrier concluded that he needed to create an environment with stable humidity and free of impurities, so he dedicated himself to studying existing ideas and designing the machine. The result came in what he called an apparatus for treating air. Considered the world's first modern electric air conditioner, designed to filter the air and control humidity and temperature, a device similar to this one which was installed at the printing company in 1902 and was patented in 1906. Since the machine is described in various ways in the references I found, I decided to focus my analysis on the patent. Willis Carrier describes the invention as a device designed to purify the air, not to cool it. This doesn't mean he didn't foresee and even implement cooling. There's a difference between what he could register in the patent and what was constructed. The process started here where a large electric fan created an air current that passed through the machine in this direction. Air entered on this side, where there was a coil designed to control its temperature. It was an idea based on how air was already heated at that time, circulating it through a hot coil. This part wasn't detailed in the patent, but it was anticipated. He states, These heating or cooling coils constitute no part of the invention, and may be of any known construction, and their temperature regulated in any suitable manner. They are omitted when it is not desired to alter the temperature of the air. I believe he wrote it this way because this refrigeration part was already patented in ice making machines, besides being a complex mechanism to include in this patent. So he only anticipated the application of these refrigeration systems in his machine, essentially describing the air conditioner with some additional accessories. Next, the air passed through this part with a cold water spray designed to clean the air of solid particles and add some moisture when it was too dry. Remember that the goal of his device was to maintain stable air humidity around 55%, not to leave it dry. At this stage, the air passed through a mechanical separator designed to remove solid impurity particles, along with most of the water introduced to clean it. It was a series of metal plates forming a zigzag path for the air, forcing it from side to side against the plate's surfaces. In the project built at the printing company, at this stage of the coil, a system that pumped cold water from a well was initially installed. But a few months later, this was replaced by a closed cycle ammonia compression system similar to those used in ice making machines of the time, which absorbed heat and condensed excess moisture from the air. Since cold air carries less moisture than warm air, he managed to reduce humidity in the factory, and consequently, the moisture content in the paper, while also cleaning the air of impurities, allowing four color aligned printing to be possible. This beautiful multicolored edition of Judge Magazine from 1903 was one of the first commercial products to benefit from modern air conditioning at the printing company. Another positive effect that he also achieved, and that we are eternally grateful today, was lowering the temperature of the place, allowing a new and revolutionary technology to be born. 
Shortly after Carrier obtained the patent for his apparatus for treating air in 1906, a North Carolina engineer named Stuart Kramer used the term air conditioning in his patent application to describe an air humidifier for the textile industry. It was a ventilation system designed to do the opposite, add moisture to the air in the textile factory, which tended to be dry. The device created an air conditioning at a certain humidity level, making the thread easier to spin, a term that Willis Carrier soon adopted and even incorporated into the name of his company, founded in 1909. Well, at this time the company wasn't his yet, it was a subsidiary of Buffalo Forge Company, where he worked, but he was left with the position of vice president and responsible for this new line of business. In 1914, Willis Carrier completed the installation of the first residential air conditioner in Charles Gates's mansion in Minneapolis. It was 210 meters high, 1.80 meters wide, and 6 meters long, but the owner died before he could turn it on. Also in 1914, the first air conditioner was installed in a hospital in Pittsburgh, where it was used to establish the first incubator room, capable of providing a comfortable environment for babies. But despite these important milestones, the business was still moving slowly. That same year, in 1914, World War I began, an event that caused Buffalo Forge Company to focus its efforts on factory production, suspending all other commercial activities at the end of 1914, including the air conditioning company, then, in 1915, Carrier and six other engineer colleagues left Buffalo Forge Company to found Carrier Engineering Corporation, a company that, like all others, learned from its mistakes. In the first refrigeration systems installed in movie theaters, they reused the existing heating ducts that distributed hot air in the winter to distribute cold air in the summer. The detail was that the ventilation openings were on the floor, which made perfect sense when you wanted to heat the environment since hot air rises. But when you want to do the opposite, that's not a good idea. When they turned on the air conditioner on hot summer days, the cold air stayed near the floor, to the point where people had to use newspapers around their feet to keep them warm, while at head height, the heat and stuffiness were unbearable. This problem was only solved in 1922, when the Carrier Engineering Corporation designed an air conditioning system for the Metropolitan Theater in Los Angeles, with ventilation openings at the top of the rooms. Besides boosting cinemas and theaters, the invention of the air conditioner also boosted the growth of department stores and restaurants, which used the climatized environment to attract customers during the hot summer months. In the industry, the impact was equally significant. Textile, pharmaceutical, and food industries, for example, were greatly benefited by the creation of climatized production environments. Imagine a slaughterhouse operating without a properly controlled environment. It would be extremely difficult, if not impossible, to maintain the quality and safety of products. The invention of the air conditioner also propelled scientific advances in fields such as chemistry, biology, and electronics. By precisely regulating temperature, humidity, and air purity, ideal conditions for research development were created. Of course, Carrier's success soon attracted the interest of other companies, such as Frigidaire and General Electric, which also entered the air conditioning market and further boosted innovation and competition. In 1929, Refrigerator manufacturer Frigidaire used its technical knowledge to launch a residential air conditioner that would be the precursor to the split type, where the condensing unit is separate from the evaporating unit. The problem was that the part outside the house weighed 180 kilos, and the cabinet inside, which looked like a radio, weighed 90 kilos. A heavy, expensive, and complicated to use device. Not to mention the year of launch, 1929, the year of the Great Depression a time when air conditioner sales cooled more than the devices themselves. It was a period of financial difficulties for companies. In 1932, inventors H. H. Schultz and J. Q. Sherman obtained a patent for a portable air conditioner with ducts installed in the windowsill through which heat was transported to the outside environment. The units hit the market costing between $10,000 and $50,000, equivalent to $218,000 to $1 million today. We can say that cost was still a problem. Around 1937, the carrier company began to recover. In 1939, it attracted the attention of visitors at the New York World's Fair by demonstrating the capabilities of its invention in an igloo-shaped pavilion. But then came World War II and sales cooled again. During the war, a British engineer named Henry Galson made significant advancements with the window air conditioner model. He developed a more compact, powerful, and affordable version of the device and licensed the patents to major companies in the industry. 
These technological advancements, combined with the economic prosperity of the post-war era, boosted window air conditioners to become a standard feature in new homes and office buildings, causing sales to skyrocket. Sales grew from 43,000 units in 1947 to over 1 million units in 1953. It was at this time, when the Carrier Company finally began to take off, that its founder Willis Carrier passed away. He died in New York on October 7, 1950, leaving behind a tremendous legacy for the world and his descendants. The air conditioning unit contributed to previously sparsely populated areas becoming home to many people in the middle of the desert. Whether this was a good thing is debatable. A lot of people living in a place not conducive to human life and spending huge amounts of energy on air conditioning doesn't seem like a good idea. From that point on, the air conditioner became so important that today, 89% of North American homes have one. This accounted for 19% of all residential electricity consumption in the United States in 2020. Compared to Brazil, for example, in 2019, air conditioners were present in 16.6% .6 of homes accounting for approximately 14% of all residential electricity demand. The big difference in the case of Brazil is that, in addition to having fewer air conditioners, almost 90% of the electricity comes from renewable sources, whereas in the US, over 60% of electricity comes from fossil fuels. In other words, with some exceptions like Brazil, in most countries, cooling the interiors of homes, buildings, and industries consumes enormous amounts of dirty energy which releases large quantities of carbon into the atmosphere, making the planet hotter and unbearable without an air conditioner. This is the air conditioning paradox. During the energy crisis of the 1970s, energy efficiency programs were established by the US government and subsequently by other countries, which managed to drastically reduce energy consumption in electrical appliances. To give you an idea of the progress that has been made, today, an air conditioning unit consumes half the electricity it did in the 1990s something very good for the planet and your pocket. Regarding the origin of this mini split type air conditioner, it emerged in the 1960s in Japan. Due to the small size of houses and thin walls that couldn't support the large and noisy window units, companies like Toshiba and Mitsubishi Electric were motivated to develop this solution. Toshiba's device was developed first, in 1961, and was basically a window air conditioner split in half, with a noisy compressor on the outside. However, it was Mitsubishi who had the idea of fixing the evaporator part on the wall in 1968, thus establishing the design we recognize in today's models. Well, as the video is already long, I will show in a very simplified way how the air conditioner works, which is basically the same process as the refrigerator. There is an evaporator coil in the part of the unit that stays inside the building, and a condenser coil that stays outside. These two metal coils are connected by tubing to a compressor and an expansion valve. And inside this metal tubing, there is a refrigerant liquid that easily changes from liquid to gas. When this refrigerant liquid changes from liquid to gas in the evaporator, it absorbs a large amount of heat from the environment, which is transported to the condenser outside the building, where it returns to liquid state and releases the heat into the environment. Here's another invention that has had a huge impact on our world so big that its effects can be seen even in the architecture of buildings and urban planning. Well, that's it for today. If you liked the video, don't forget to like it. Also, there are these other videos that I'm showing here that you will probably like, I recommend.